All right, so let's say you have a 240 hertz monitor and you play competitive games. What is the best way to approach setting that up? Should you be using things like G-Sync or FreeSync, NVIDIA Reflex or their ultra low latency mode? Should you maybe consider a frame cap even at 240 hertz or maybe even a little bit below that, maybe 180 FPS if the game is a bit more demanding? Well, these are questions that I get asked every single day. So I kind of want to make a single video explaining what you need to know. So I want to start off by talking about frame cap which is essentially where you cap your frames from exceeding a certain limit and it's something that I've been seeing getting a lot more popular as time goes on. It's something that can be done within a program called RTSS or Reva Tuner and that is included with MSI Afterburner. Simply plug in whatever frame cap you would like. This can also be done within a command line option for some games and other games like Overwatch for example have it implemented within the game menu itself. VSync on the other hand is not something that you should be using for frame capping though since it adds a ton of input lag and that has the potential to skip frames altogether if your GPU can't keep up. Capping your frames the right way though there are a few main benefits. The first is actually lower input lag compared to letting your frames run completely uncapped. So here with an RTX 2060 in Apex Legends running at about 150 FPS, the average end-to-end -end latency is around 33 milliseconds. By end-to-end -end latency, we're talking about from the moment that you click your mouse to the moment that your gun displays a muzzle flash on screen. However, by capping frames to 120, you can reduce that input lag by around nine milliseconds. The reason that this happens is that by frame capping, you're effectively eliminating the render queue being sent to the GPU. As soon as a frame is scheduled by the CPU, there's no waiting in queue for it to be rendered, it's instead just rendered right away and your monitor will display it upon the next refresh. So this is pretty cool and all when it comes to lowering input lag, but it's also kind of a dated method. As soon as Nvidia implemented their low latency mode and reflex, low latency which can be enabled in their control panel and reflex which can be enabled within most competitive games menus, these basically achieve the same thing which is eliminating the render queue but without the need to cap your frames. So effectively you're getting the input lag benefits of frame capping and the higher frame rate benefits of running uncapped. There is a slight hit to frame rate, but I think we'd agree it's not that much. It's also important to note that the more powerful GPU you have and the higher frame rate that you have in the first place, the input lag improvements from enabling something like reflex will be reduced. With a 1060 and a 2060, there's about a nine millisecond improvement by enabling reflex, but with a 3070, it's only about four milliseconds. And that's since the render queue is much smaller to begin with. AMD also has their anti-lag option, which can be enabled within their driver menu. So for those using Radeon GPUs, definitely consider using that. And the input lag savings seem to be pretty similar. So as a bit of a summary here, if you're capping your frames solely for the purpose of lower input lag, then you're much better off just enabling something like Nvidia Reflex or AMD anti-lag. That way you get that same input lag benefit, but you're still able to maintain a much higher frame rate in return. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is also related to frame capping and it's this idea that you should be capping your frames before the FPS gets too high and out of control and unpredictable. And maybe you've seen this happen in game yourself. The higher and higher your frame rate climbs, the more sporadic and unpredictable it becomes. It's pretty easy to assume how bad this is for input lag and in-game smoothness if things are constantly spiking and dipping. However, there is a really simple explanation for this that explains why this isn't actually that bad. So the first thing that we need to understand here are frame times. Essentially, they are the the amount of time to render a single frame and it's what's used to calculate frame rate. Essentially, the smaller the frame times are, the bigger influence they'll have on the frame rate. So if your FPS drops from 300 FPS down to 240, that's a pretty hefty 60 FPS drop, but your frame times actually only slow down by 0.8 milliseconds. It's pretty easy to understand why that difference is really hard to feel in reality. By comparison, if your frames dropped from 180 FPS down to 120, again, the same 60 60 FPS drop as before, but there you've experienced a slowdown of 2.8 milliseconds, and that's a slowdown that you're much more likely to feel. So this is exactly why in pretty much all games out there, once your FPS exceeds around 200, it starts to fluctuate and jump around a lot more. Again, it's not even a bad thing, and the frame time fluctuations are probably the same as they are usually, it's just that now they have a much bigger impact on what the resulting frame rate will be. Now there was a time in Apex Legends where you did need to cap the frame 
frames at around 190, as beyond that there was a bit of game engine weirdness and micro stuttering, but it does seem that they have fixed that as far as I can see for the last couple of seasons. I've been running the game upwards of 300 FPS recently with none of that previous game engine bug occurring. You do still see that increased frame rate fuzziness occurring as we go beyond 200 FPS here and you can see that, and at first glance that does look incredibly bad. But when we convert this FPS plot into a frame time plot, which is what we really care about when it comes to smoothness and you know stuttering, the frame time deviation and amplitude isn't actually any worse at higher frame rates. As you can see here, there's about a one millisecond variation from frame to frame, no matter how fast you're rendering. If there was an increased choppiness and micro stuttering at higher frames, you'd see something like this instead, but that of course is not what we get. Now, one last thing when it comes to frame capping and it's in regards to drops and and dips in your FPS. Let's say a smoke grenade or an ultimate ability goes off in the game that you're playing and your FPS starts tanking a little bit more. Well, it's this idea that since you're frame capping and you have a much more consistent and less sporadic FPS to begin with, in theory, when you do get those drops in FPS, they won't be as bad but this is also not true. So to test this, I ran a little benchmark in the apex firing range. It's roughly an 80 second benchmark run featuring some Bangalore smokes and explosions in the exact same positions every time, trying to simulate what would happen in an actual game. And as you can see, the FPS drops are pretty much identical. On the left, we are running completely uncapped and on the right, we're running with a frame cap of 143 FPS. One thing that is true though, is that your frame drops probably won't feel as bad when a frame cap is enabled since your FPS will be dropping a shorter distance. On the left, we're dropping from over 200 FPS down to 100 FPS here. Whereas with a frame cap in place, we're only dropping from around 140. So, you know, that's definitely a valid argument if you find those big FPS drops kind of jarring when you're playing, but you do have to be okay with maintaining a lower frame rate to begin with, and that's not something that I really recommend. The reason being is that you're just throwing away so much performance and fluidity in those times where you won't have those FPS drops. Think of times in game where there aren't a lot of abilities and demanding stuff going on screen, but you might be in a simple 1v1 situation and you do want the game to feel as responsive as possible. So this one's a bit of personal preference, but I'd recommend just rolling with the punches and just running uncapped to get the best potential performance that you can get. That way, you know your system is always giving you the best potential responsiveness and smoothness. Now there is actually one instance where I would recommend using a frame cap and it's when you don't want to kind of exceed your monitor's refresh rate. So let's say you have a 240 hertz monitor for example, if you set a frame cap of 239 FPS and you also use that in conjunction with G-Sync or FreeSync depending on what GPU you have, I actually think that is a pretty good approach. That way you kind of make sure that you're always getting a fully rendered frame on your display and you also completely avoid screen tearing. This approach approach is really only useful though for those who find screen tearing really noticeable, which above 200 FPS I personally don't think it is, but again, this is still a really valid and thoughtful approach. G-Sync and FreeSync are technologies that I can recommend using, especially if you're gaming below say 144 FPS or so. That's where screen tearing is noticeable and enabling it can deliver a clearer and less choppy gaming experience. I will also mention the added input lag for these technologies is extremely small and definitely worth the trade off for those who want to use it. There is one catch here too though, and it's the reason that I personally run all competitive games completely uncapped. Although it might seem counterintuitive and borderline pointless to let your GPU render more frames than your monitor can display, this is actually beneficial for input lag and general responsiveness. If you're rendering more frames than your monitor can display, say 200 FPS on a 144Hz monitor for example, you will be displaying more recent information on your screen. If on the other hand you have a frame cap where you could be rendering a lot more FPS, then there will be some idle time where nothing is being rendered. In that time, your GPU could be rendering at least part of the current scene and in information and give you some of the most recent frame. Essentially with a frame cap in place, what you're seeing on your monitor is slightly old information. Whereas if you go beyond that, you have the potential to see more recently rendered content. To really get this across, picture this on the extreme side of things. Imagine like 200 FPS running on a 60 hertz monitor. Even though you can only display 60 frames per second regardless of what you do, rendering 200 FPS as opposed to rendering 60 FPS means that you get much more up-to-date information displayed and so the game will feel a lot more responsive. Now of course this has much less of an effect the higher refresh rate monitor and the higher FPS that you play on, but the same principle does still apply. Running an uncapped FPS and rendering as much information that you can
can means that you'll typically always get the most up-to-date scene. So those are kind of the two approaches that I'd recommend using. On one hand, you can keep it simple, run everything uncapped at a fixed monitor refresh rate, and typically get the most up-to-date game scenes displayed on screen. If, however, you are concerned with screen tearing and split up information, then option two would be to enable G-Sync or FreeSync, and then set a frame cap one to two FPS below your monitor's max refresh rate. In both instances, I'd recommend turning on NVIDIA Reflex if your game supports it, or the ultra low latency mode in the control panel. And then for AMD users, you can enable anti-lag in their software settings. So those are pretty much the best input related and game and display settings that you have at the moment. Really glad to put this video together and hopefully it helped you out. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.